Independence is happiness. Join the union, girls, and together say equal pay for equal work. Suffrage is the pivotal right. Whoever controls work and wages, controls morals. Failure is impossible. This is rather different from the receptions I used to get 50 years ago. They threw things at me then but they were not roses. Organize, agitate, educate, must be our war cry. Oh, if I could but live another century and see the fruition of all the work for women. There is so much yet to be done. There never will be complete equality until women themselves help to make laws and elect lawmakers. She who succeeds in gaining the mastery of the bicycle will gain the mastery of life. I always distrust people who know so much about what God wants them to do to their fellows. Trust me that as I ignore all law to help the slave, so will I ignore it all to protect an enslaved woman. I shall earnestly and persistently continue to urge all women to the practical recognition of the old revolutionary maxim. Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. The principle of self-government cannot be violated with impunity. The individual's right to it is sacred, regardless of class, caste, race, color, sex or any other accident or incident of birth. The older I get, the greater power I seem to have to help the world. I am like a snowball. The further I am rolled the more I gain. The only question left to be settled now is, are women persons? And I hardly believe any of our opponents will have the hardihood to say they are not. White men have always controlled their wives' wages. Colored men were not able to do so until they themselves became free. Then they owned both their wives and their wages. The day may be approaching when the whole world will recognize woman as the equal of man. Wherever, on the face of the globe or on the page of history, you show me a disfranchised class. I will show you a degraded class of labor. If all the rich and all of the church people should send their children to the public schools they would feel bound to concentrate their money on improving these schools until they met the highest ideals. I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. It is poor rule that won't work more ways than one. Here, in this very first paragraph of the Declaration, is the assertion of the natural right of all to the ballot. For how can the consent of the governed be given if the right to vote be denied? I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do because I notice it always coincides with their own desires. Being persons, then, women are citizens. And no state has a right to make any new law, or to enforce any old law, that shall abridge their privileges or immunities. Cautious, careful people always casting about to preserve their reputations, can never effect a reform. I think the girl who is able to earn her own living and pay her own way should be as happy as anybody on earth. 
The sense of independence and security is very sweet. To think, I have had more than 60 years of hard struggle for a little liberty, and then to die without it, seems so cruel. There is not a woman born who desires to eat the bread of dependence. Resolved, that the women of this nation in 1876, have greater cause for discontent, rebellion and revolution than the men of 1776. You would better educate ten women into the practice of liberal principles than to organize a thousand on a platform of intolerance and bigotry. I do not demand equal pay for any women save those who do equal work in value. Scorn to be coddled by your employers. Make them understand that you are in their service as workers, not as women. I do not consider divorce an evil by any means. It is just as much a refuge for women married to brutal men as Canada was to the slaves of brutal masters. The work of woman is not to lessen the severity or the certainty of the penalty for the violation of the moral law, but to prevent this violation by the removal of the causes which lead to it. I have encountered riotous mobs and have been hung in effigy, but my motto is, men's rights are nothing more. Women's rights are nothing less. What you should do is to say to outsiders that a Christian has neither more nor less rights in our association than an atheist. Modern invention has banished the spinning wheel, and the same law of progress makes the woman of today a different woman from her grandmother. Woman must have a purse of her own. And how can this be so long as the law denies to the wife all right to both the individual and the joint earnings? I don't want to die as long as I can work. The minute I cannot, I want to go. No, self-respecting woman should wish or work for the success of a party who ignores her sex. Marriage, to women as to men, must be a luxury, not a necessity. An incident of life, not all of it. If women will not accept marriage with subjection, nor men proffer it without, there is, there can be, no alternative. The women who will not be ruled must live without marriage. And during this transition period, single women make comfortable and attractive homes for themselves. For every betrayed woman, there is always the betrayer, man. No man is good enough to govern any woman without her consent. Men, their rights, and nothing more. Women, their rights, and nothing less. I declare to you that woman must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself, and there I take my stand. Women, we might as well be dogs being the moon as petitioners without the right to vote. The worst enemy women have is in the pulpit. It is downright mockery to talk to women of their enjoyment of the blessings of liberty while they are denied the use of the only means of securing them provided by this democratic republican government, the ballot. An oligarchy of race, where the Saxon rules the African, might be endured. But this oligarchy of sex which makes father, brothers, husband, sons, 
the oligarchs over the mother and sisters, the wife and daughters of every household, carries discord and rebellion into every home of the nation.